Hello and welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. We're doing another stretch algorithm test today, and this time we're doing more uh, music production focused applications of the stretch and pitch algorithms. I'm going to start off with a stack of background vocals. We're going to align everything using stretch markers. Then I've got a lead vocal that we're going to pitch correct with retune, just one phrase of a verse. And we'll go through the different algorithms, see how they sound. And then I've got some multi-track drums. You can see here without stretch markers and with stretch markers. And we're going to quantize them. And we'll hear the differences between the different algorithms. If you haven't seen the extreme time stretching video already, you can click the info card right here or the link in the description. All right, so we're going to start off with this vocal stack. I've got this top track, and this is going to be like my uh, my guide or where I'm going to stretch things to. I'm actually going to put in I'm going to put in some markers here, so we have a guide for where to snap to, and all these other tracks will snap to these lines. I already have the stretch markers on these items, so it's just a matter of grabbing those stretch markers and then it should snap to these uh, marker lines automatically. Okay, so now that I have all the markers in here, uh, let's play this before we do any stretching and we'll hear how this actually sounds. So what we're focusing on is just the timing of these notes. So there are three notes in each of these, and then there are six parts. So we're going to use this top one as where to align to, and we're going to use the super awesome magnetic stretch marker trick. So I'm going to slowly move these, move one of the stretch markers, and as it gets to another stretch marker that is nearby, on another selected item, it's going to attach to each other and they're going to move together. And because we have snap on in the uh, main toolbar, they're all going to snap to that marker line that I put in there. So I'll jump ahead to when I finish this snapping process. Okay, so they're all aligned. Hopefully those stretch markers are in an ideal place where this actually sounds good and everything's time aligned. We're using the Elastic Pro and the normal parameter. Here we go. So we are hearing a little bit of clicking just from uh, the position of the stretch markers. You would want to go in and very carefully move everything to adjust that. It would be an alt drag to move that position. I'm mostly concerned about what's happening within the sustained sections, the points between, like, can we hear that this is stretched out uh, 0 0.68? So let's just go through the algorithms. This is going to take long enough. Uh, without tweaking things and, and finding the perfect settings. So that's Elastic Pro 3. We're going to Elastic Soloist Monophonic next. And that one sounds good for vocals. This is the one that I go to most often. 
Here's the new rubber band library. I'm going to use the default settings. All right, so let's go back and actually work on improving the sound of the rubber band library. Preserve formats, we're going to enable that. I'm going to do smooth transients. We'll do soft detector. Use pitch mode high quality. And let's see how that goes. So that does make an improvement, but I don't think it's enough to use that one instead of the Elastic Soloist Monophonic. That one sounds really good, and it doesn't have that fluttery sort of effect. And these other ones, Sound Touch and Simple Windowed Fast, they're not going to sound as good as Elastic Pro or Soloist or even the Rubber Band Library. So I'm not going to show you those ones in this video. Okay, so now we're on to the lead vocal pitch correction section of this tutorial. Retune is on the track, and it is bypassed right now. Here we go. I'm on fire. It's not too far off. It's pretty close, uh, but it could definitely use some help with retune. So I'm going to turn that on. And I'm going to make sure that we go back to our default setting, Elastic 3 Pro. And I'm going to put on the normal parameter to start with. Now, I'm not using the automatic pitch correction, but the settings here do affect what happens in the manual correction. So I've got the attack time set to 50, and I've got the algorithm set to project default. So it's just one place that we're changing the algorithm. In manual mode, I've already gone ahead and drawn in uh, where the corrections should be. We're going to have a look in the automatic view so that we can see uh, how far things are being tuned. This is Elastic 3 Pro in Retune. I'm on fire. Now we can try this Preserve Formants option. Uh, that one didn't sound that bad to me to begin with, but we can maybe improve it a little bit more. You can set this to most pitches. These lower and higher options are really more when you're changing octaves. Uh, it can really make a, a big difference. And I showed that in the re-pitch video a while ago. So again, there's another link that you can check out if you haven't seen that video already. I demonstrate that more in there. Uh, we can put this on preserve formants most pitches. This may have a, a difference in the sound. I'm on fire. And we'll change this to Elastic 3 Soloist Monophonic. And this is the one that I usually recommend people use for tuning vocals. I'm on fire. And that one sounds the best so far, in my opinion. And rubber band default. Here we go. Totally unusable. We'll just change these settings to preserve formants and uh, smooth transients, set the detector to soft, set the pitch mode to high quality. Click OK, and let's try that again. I'm on fire. So even if we're ignoring that glitchy sound, it's totally changing the frequency balance of this vocal. 
So if we bypass this and listen. Lots of high frequencies in there. It's very clear vocal. Turn this on. And now suddenly there's reverb. This is not a good algorithm for tuning vocals. So that's it for the lead vocal demonstration. We'll go on to drums. All right, so before we stretch things, let's hear how these drums sound on their own. So I am going to turn the grid on so this makes sense where I've put the stretch markers. So I have stretch markers on every transient, every drum hit, there's a stretch marker and they're stretching from plus or minus 5% or so, 1.02, 0.97, and each one is going to be a little bit different. None of them are stretched really far. So uh, let's hear how that sounds with Elastique 3 Pro Normal. To my ear, that has reduced things to sort of a, uh, especially the, the cymbals, to a low bitrate MP3 sort of quality. I hear it mostly on the cymbals. If we listen to just this one. Yeah, this one here is the worst. Let's find that in the original. It's smooth, no warbling. And here after stretching. And that's only stretched 3%. So let's move on to the next algorithm. And when I use stretch markers on drums, which is very rare, but I'll always switch to the Elastic 3 Pro synchronized. And I find that this sounds a little bit better for drums. I find that that one works a little bit better for those uh, those stretched cymbals. Occasionally that helps with any phase shifts that you might be hearing. Now let's give this a try on the rubber band library with the default settings. I don't think this is going to sound great, but well, here it is. Well, personally, I don't think I could use that on a project. It just sounds awful to me. It's changed the sound of the drums completely. No punch, it sounds choppy. There's like stutters in there, totally unusable. If you want to use stretch markers on drums, recommend Elastic 3 Pro and the uh, synchronized option. That one sounds the best to me if I'm forced to use stretch markers and I try to avoid it. Uh, so that's it. Uh, maybe not as thorough, but I want to kind of focus on what you would actually be trying out in your projects, whether it's uh, tuning vocals or multi-track drums, those other options like Simple Windowed and the Sound Touch algorithms. They're not even going to be half as good as the examples I showed you. And all of these examples are fairly flawed in the sound. Hopefully that translates through to YouTube and to your headphones. I can definitely hear it in mine. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've learned something. Hope you can put this into use in your own projects. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. 
and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.